again, happy Valentine's Day. We're welcome that you've, we're welcome, we're, we welcome you. We're glad you've joined us. This is going to be a great training this morning. We've got none other than Christian Sadler. He is uh, our, our leader here for the Salt Lake area, Team Elevate. He is someone that is just motivated to, to give his best all the time. He, uh, puts in so many hours behind the scenes that to keep everything running well, to support our businesses, to support our education uh, opportunities, the study groups and everything, and keep things flowing well. He is a, a guy that's got a, a wealth of experience in not only the, the education side of it, but the real estate side of it. He is someone that is just out there slaying it and making things happen. He is making the community a better place just by being there and bringing with him the, the talents for sharing and building and adding value wherever he goes. And now to add value to us this morning is Christian Sadler. Good morning, Christian. How are you? I am great, Ron. How are you? Fantastic. So glad you're here. Good. Well, I'm glad to be here, and I know that you're fantastic. It seems like every time I talk to you, you've got something good going on. you got a smile on your face, and you're helping to uh, – you know, bring up the people around you. So I really appreciate who you are, Ron, and everything that you do for this team. And especially with these morning calls, man, you have taken on this task and really made it your own and made it something special for every single person that gets on these lines. So thank you so much for who you are, Ron. And uh, welcome, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. I have a ton of love for every single one of you, especially for the fact that you guys are here, you know, on a holiday still focused on your business. Now, today is the day before the last day to enter orders in order for them to count and pay you in February. So if you want them to pay you in February, well, it's time to get those orders in. And that kind of leads into my topic for today. And actually, um, you know, great timing, uh, you know, great choice from Ron of what Bob Snyder talked about on this morning's Generally Speaking that was shared here. And he talked about that continuous follow-up. And I just want to hit on that a little bit. I want to, you know, get into focusing on the long game. So let me go ahead and uh, do a screen share real quick. Move some things around here. Right there, right there. All right, perfect. So focusing on the long game. And uh, when, when I talk about focusing on the long game, what I mean by that is many people have a system. And um, I want you guys to utilize the systems in, that, that, that is in place. And what I mean by that is, you know, typically you have somebody answer an ad, right? Those people um, get a phone call. And then from the phone call, those people are going to be, you know, invited to um, an intro, maybe like a four pillars event. From the four pillars event, they're going to be invited to uh, a follow up. And then from the follow-up, you're going to move them, you know, to uh, ask for the order or an OEP, an order entry party. But the issue is that I see for a lot of people is when somebody doesn't put in their order right here at this spot, they stop and they move on to somebody else. They go and... Uh, and they, they start talking to the next person that answered the ad, and they move those people forward to a phone call and into an intro, right? And sometimes if these people don't make it to the intro, well, this is where it stops. And so, you know, the person goes and they have somebody else that answers their ad, they move them forward to a phone call, 
they move those people forward to an intro. I don't know if you guys can really see that yellow or not. Um, and maybe these people do move forward to a follow-up. And then, you know what? They stop. You stop right there. And uh, they focus on that next person. You know, I know some people that are really good at collecting leads, right? They get people that answer their ads. Sometimes they make that initial phone call, and if they don't reach them, they stop right there. And, uh, Whoa. All right. Yeah. I'm back muted. All right. So this is a continual cycle, right? And uh, the interesting thing is, you know, some people, they even have someone that answered the ad. They move those people to a phone call. Those people move forward to an intro. Those people move forward to a follow-up. Those people move over here and they ask for the order. Those people pay their money and then the connection stops there. Folks, you always want to be connecting, okay? So A, B, C, always be connecting and Bob gave some great tips he said you know what a lot of times it's gonna be that you're just making a phone call you're just reaching out you're you're touching base with people people are in this cycle of life and uh, you know what nowadays we have the technology there's a lot of different ways that you can connect with people and it's not necessarily you making a phone call to every single one of those leads because I get it listen if you're really good at this part right here, at getting these ads out there and uh, having people answer them, sometimes it's overwhelming because you've got more ads coming in. You've got people that you've called that uh, didn't answer. You haven't been able to get back with. You've got people that you've invited that didn't make it. You've got people that you know did make it to the intro and haven't answered your phone call. And uh, sometimes it's easy to go back to the starting point because you know that's what you all right. Make sure you guys are on mute as you come on the line. Uh, appreciate that. All right. So um, sometimes it's really easy to go back to that initial conversation because you have a script for that, right? There's a script for that. Oh, you know what? They answered my ad. I have this, you know, basic conversation, and I make the invite. I've got a script, and uh, you know that sometimes there's there's not a script for just continuing to build a connection. And here's what I've found is many of my, um, you know, best team members, one of my most effective, some of my most effective team members are people that did not necessarily go through this linear system to money. There, there was a longer process there. And uh, part of that is the cycle of life. So let me just clear this here. The cycle of life looks like this. You know what? When you're, uh, when you're talking to somebody, they might be um, up here and they might be in just a, a really good spot, right? So they are, you know, they, they're happy. They've got uh, their, they, their money seems to be on point. They're doing all right. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, if you catch them when they don't have any pain, right, they don't have any reason for change, then oftentimes you're not going to enroll them on the spot. Sometimes they might even answer an ad just to kind of feel and see what's going out there, right? But then what's going to happen is something's going to happen in their life where they become dissatisfied, right? And it might not be that they're super unhappy, but pretty soon they start realizing, you know what, this job that I'm in, um, it just isn't what I thought that it was. You know, at one time, I really thought that I was climbing this ladder. I really thought that I was, you know, doing good. And, and uh, now I'm realizing I'm getting passed up to, you know, by other people because of, of nepotism and, you know, they're, they, you know, they're family members with the CEO and, 
you know, they took the, the spot that I feel like I rightfully deserved, whatever it is, they start to become unhappy. And oftentimes, if you can catch them there, they're starting to look. But here's the thing. If they're, if they're just um, starting to experience that, oftentimes the money's still there and they're still providing for their family and they're not quite ready to make a change. But what's going to happen is if they continue down this cycle of life, Oftentimes, they end up in that spot where, you know what, they are just not happy with what's going on, right? Um, something's happened, you know, maybe their business isn't where it used to be, right? Instead of, you know, them having a job and being dissatisfied, maybe their business, you know, hasn't been really producing and all of a sudden, something major happens. Maybe they're a contractor and somebody, you know, steals their tools or, you know, one of their guys starts a house on fire, whatever it is, you know what, it's pretty soon they start questioning, they start second guessing, they start saying, you know what, I need to make a change. Oftentimes, this is the best time to be able to enroll somebody in Renatus. Now, the interesting thing about it, though, if you uh, allow, this is also the time uh, where these people are going to have the most excuses of why maybe now is not the right time, right? Oh, well, things aren't quite where they used to be. My business is, you know, this, you know, I don't have the as consistent as income as I used to have. You know, I'm thinking about making a change and I need to put money aside. You know, I've had a couple of uh, things on my credit. I just don't know that now's the right time. Maybe I need to wait. You know, I'm, I'm just going back to school, right? And so through this, if you, allow, if you allow their excuses to pause their uh, enrollment and their choice to move forward, then pretty soon they start moving up the ladder. Maybe they did go back to school. And because they're going back to school, you know what? They've kind of got this uh, half grin right here, right? They've got that half grin where it's like, okay, I can see – I can see hope. I can see a new path. I can see myself, you know, moving in a direction. And even if their financial um, um, standpoint hasn't changed much, sometimes if they're moving in that right direction and they can see a light, they start to move into that path where it's going to be more difficult to enroll them because they already feel like they've chosen a path, right? And uh, if they continue up that path, then they're going to, you know, have their other excuses. And their excuses are, well, you know what? Things are going pretty good right now. I don't know if I want to shake the boat. I don't know if I want to rock the boat. And uh, oftentimes when people are most satisfied, right, it's going to be the more difficult time to enroll them. But the, the interesting thing about it is if you can get these people – they're going to be some of your biggest producers. They're going to be some of your superstars. They're going to be the people that can lead a market, right? They're, the, they're going to be the ones that can get out there and make some big things happen. Because oftentimes if people are completely unhappy down here, um, they've got their own excuses. Uh, but I will say your, your, your prime spot, your, your easiest enrollment is going to be, you know, somewhere – in this range. Typically over here on this side. This is going to be the easiest enrollment, but are we focused on a life of ease? Are you guys excited for an easy life? Because I'll tell you right now, that's not really the entrepreneur way. You know what? If you're focused on ease, you're going to end up with a hard life later on. I mean, think about it for a second. What is easy? I mean, what's easy is staying in bed, eating the things that make you feel good, but, you know, um, you know, emotionally, but maybe not physically, right? And if you do that long enough, pretty soon, you're living that 400-pound life, right? And pretty soon, life becomes hard. And just moving to the next task is going to be difficult, right? Just being able to, you know, tend to your bed sores are going to be difficult. I know I'm getting a little graphic and I'm going a little far here, but you guys get the point. 
if you focus only on easy in life, then life will become hard. So here's the thing. This, um, you're, you're going to want to keep working on and focusing on people in the system where you can have this conversation. And it's, it's a direct path. I mean, uh, Eloy just had a guy the other day that uh, he, you know, he invited down, got the guy to the follow-up, and the guy was ready to go. He was just in a spot where he was ready to make a change. He was already in a spot where he knew it was time to make a change. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get those people that within, you know, two exposures, they're ready to, to, uh, to buy their full combo. And uh, the only reason I related to, to Eloy was, you know, I happened to do the follow-up and, and uh, enter the order, and, and Eloy was in Bermuda at the time. I mean, you'll get those guys. But uh, if you want to talk about some really high-powered um, team members, if you can catch them right here and you can build enough of a connection where they're ready to enroll, these are going to be some of your biggest players, right? These people who are not necessarily unhappy with life, but the type of people who are always looking for uh, a new uh, next level, that are always looking for that way to level up their life, to go to, you know, the things that are going to take them further. These are the people that don't focus on ease. So how do you get those big players? I mean, I think about, uh, you know, Chris White, for example, right? Uh, Michael enrolled Chris White, and once, once Chris went for it, you know, he had an $80,000 month right out of the gate. How do you get somebody like that? I, uh, I had a guy that, uh, that joined my team at one time. And this was when I was really young in the business. And I didn't necessarily have a ton of success yet. I was still trying to figure out this whole thing and marketing and real estate. And, you know, I had done some things, but I was still like, I still kind of fell out of place. And uh, what I did was I just started networking. I knew that I needed to get around people who were more successful than me and I needed to introduce them to people who were more successful than them. And so that's what I started doing. I started going to meetups. And when I went to meetups, the first thing that I did is I wanted to see how all the other meetups out there were run so that I could create one that was intriguing for other people to go to. So I started going to all the different business meetups, all the different real estate meetups, all the different uh, you know, um, uh, sales meetups that were out there. And I just wanted to connect with people. And again, I knew I needed to elevate to another level who I was connecting with on a consistent basis. And then I needed to bring value to them by introducing to them to people who were more successful than them. So that's exactly what I did. And then what I did was I started hosting my own meetups. I started being the one that was putting on the meetups and bringing people down and introducing them to, uh, you know, to different concepts. But in the beginning, as I was going out there, I met a, a guy named Steve. And Steve had had a lot of success. He actually used to run a, a hard money fund, um, you know, the, that uh, he shared with me. There was there were days when he was, you know, building his fund that they had over $400,000 that uh, came in in a day, right, as they were raising funds and, you know, doing things. And uh, he was a venture capitalist. He, uh, he had done some amazing things in raising money for different businesses. And you know what? As I started connecting with Steve, um, I started talking to him about the group and I started inviting him down. And at first it was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come down. I'll see what it's about, you know, and, and uh, build a relationship. And he had his own agenda. He was looking to raise capital for, you know, some, some uh, dental practices and things that he was doing. He was looking at, you know, doing these different things. And so what I did was I started introducing him to my mentors. And so I had a mentor at the time, Chad Wade. And Chad was, Wade was making, um, I think at his peak, you know, $1.8 million a year just promoting this education. Um, that we have here. And it was, it was the infancy of what we have now, not even close to as good as what we have. 
And, uh, you know, he saw what Chad was doing. He saw the impact that he was making on people's lives. And he realized that, you know, with what he was doing, he wasn't having that type of connection. He wasn't having people come to him and thank him. You know, Steve, I'm talking about this, this, uh, this Steve guy, this venture capitalist. He wasn't having people come to him and, and thanking him. In fact, you know, he was having people, if he wasn't getting a certain rate of return at any one time, you know, he was having people, you know, call him up and berate him about, you know, how, you know, they've got his money and they're trusting him and they, they want him to do better. And so Steve started seeing a different light, but he, could, he wasn't going to switch what he was doing right away. He was making great money. So what we started doing is we actually built this relationship. I connected with him. I would, I would go, you know, listen to what he was doing and understand a little bit more about his business. I went to his house. I met his family, you know, and uh, pretty soon he said, you know what, what if we started collaborating on some things and started creating some events? And uh, that's what we did. And we started you know, creating these different events and these different, we, we brought on different uh, types of people. Um, and I wasn't promoting any of these event, events to Renata's people. Please understand that, right? Uh, what we were doing, we was pr promoting to the open public. And uh, we were talking about different things like credit and, and uh, you know, um, wealth and different things. And my portion of it, of course, we each had like 15 minutes. We brought in a few different speakers from different industries. And uh, my portion was to talk about education and real estate investing. So that's what I did. And so we would host these events. And, uh, you know, it was whoever's guests it was. We made sure that we, you know, whatever they participated in, we would compensate each other as, as entrepreneurs. And uh, Steve had brought some guests. And what happened was um, he brought, uh, you know, a few different guests in one week and I went to this event and I delivered, I just shared, you know, a quick snippet of what we do. Now, if you guys were on my call last week, you know, uh, remember when you're sharing quickly who it is we are and what we do, it's not about the how and the what, it's all about the why. And so I shared about the why. And then what I did was I actually brought somebody with me. Now at this time, I actually brought Brian Sump and Brian came in as a testimonial for me and I just had him share in less than five minutes, right? I only had 15 minutes total. So I went through and uh, within the first five minutes, I talked about, you know, um, our group and Renatus and, and uh, in what we do. And within the next five minutes, I brought in Brian Sump and I had him share his story of going from diesel mechanic to uh, you know successful um, you know investor, and then I took the last five minutes to talk about the event that I had coming up the next day. And the interesting thing about it is when you have when you when you share the why, you're going to have a whole bunch of people that are asking you the how. If you share with them the how in the improper format, they they have no reason to show up the next meeting. And so I had this guy, Rodney, and Rodney came up to me and he started asking questions. He started telling, you know, asking me, well, how this and what that and who's this? And, and I said, you know what, we're going to cover that tomorrow. Hey, that's a, that's a great question. Um, come down tomorrow. You'll enjoy it. And he even got a little frustrated because I wasn't answering his questions. Now, some of you, if you feel somebody getting frustrated because you're not answering their how questions, then you decide that you're going to start giving all in what I want to I want, what I want to uh, encourage you not to do is to share the what and the how. Instead, talk about the why. Talk about why they're going to want to come down the next day, right? You don't have to answer their question directly. You can say, you know, that's a great question. Um, one of the guys that's going to be there tomorrow that I want to introduce you to is, you know, Michael Huggins. And this guy has, you know, has done some amazing things in the business. I mean, you wouldn't believe where he came from to where he is now. He's, he's somebody that will probably be able to answer that question in, in a way that I wouldn't even be able to answer it. So come on down tomorrow. And that's, so that's what I did. Uh, kept, kept just telling Rodney to come back the next day. So he came back the next day. And guess what? He liked what he saw. And, uh, and um, he actually, there, there was another person that had come the, the, uh, the day before to this event. And he came down as well. He came down with his wife. So Steve had two guests that had come down. Now, Steve was not even an IMA yet, right? He was not enrolled in the education, and he had two people that came down. They came to Thursday. They came to my house the next day, 
uh, I had two follow-ups, right, back to back. And both of these people wanted to buy their combo. So we got them in, we got their order in, and I called up Steve and I said, hey, Steve, listen, man, I need you to understand where you're at in this process. See, if, uh, if we enroll these people through you, then you could be qualified literally the same day that you start, which means anybody you enroll after that, that's a $10,000 check. So I wanted to make sure that I gave you the opportunity as uh, these people are getting enrolled to get in front of that because really these are your prospects. You did the work here. You invited them. You know, you, you made the introduction. And uh, sure enough, Steve decided to, uh, to enroll. And, you know, there was a little bit of financing involved with one of the orders, but I made $29,250 in one day because I built a relationship with Steve. Now this, guys, this, from the time that I met Steve to the time that he actually enrolled in the business was over a year, over 12 months. Now, if you talk with Michael Huggins about uh, Chris White, how long were they at that office? How many times had, had uh, Michael had the conversation with Chris White before he finally enrolled? I can tell you right now, it was, it was a long time. It was not a, a linear conversation right? It was continuing to build value, continuing to build a connection. And, uh, and from that came, uh, you know, great success. And I think about uh, Robert and Deslin Odell, who are out and running the, uh, the Idaho marketplace. And they're, man, they are just doing some amazing things for the people out there. You know, they are the anchor for that team where they're doing real estate. They're constantly a new real estate deal. Every time I talk to them, you know, they're telling, talking to me about these different deals they're doing and the houses that they're building and those types of things. And uh, they're doing uh, webinars for people. And uh, when Robert and Neslin first came down, they didn't go through a linear path, right? Uh, they had answered uh, a meetup that, uh, that Judy had put out there and they had come to a tour. And then, you know, later on, we decided to go out to dinner with them because we, we, we built a connection and we said, when you're, when you're in town next, Hey, let's connect. And so Judy invited them to, uh, to come to dinner. And then we, you know, we continued to build that and we continued to build that connection. And then pretty soon it just made sense that even though they were kind of in this spot here, let me just find the right color. They were kind of in this spot here where their business was running and they were doing so good in Idaho that they wanted to expand their business to Utah when they saw velocity banking, when they saw some of these concepts, and when they realized there was a whole bunch of people in their own backyard that didn't have access to these uh, concepts, they decided that they wanted to enroll. And they knew if they were gonna do it, they were gonna go all in. And so there was not a question of, you know, um, uh, let's see, how do I word this? It wasn't a question of how they're going to pay for it, meaning can they? It was, how are they going to pay for it? Meaning, what's, what's going to be the best use of their money? Because they have money, you know, that they have on business cards. And they have money that is cash in the bank. And they have, you know, all these different ways of paying for it. So they just had to decide which way made most sense for them. And so I want you guys to think about the long game. I want you to think about how you can connect with people who are in this place here in addition to the linear path, in addition to finding these people here, the, you know, the, the folks that are going to be answering your ad and doing those things. How do you connect with people who are successful already that you can start building a long game with and building that connection to where when they enroll, they go and they go big. Um, and sometimes it's just about, you know, reaching out to people when you're out and about. This, uh, this last Sunday, I was out for brunch and, uh, you know, um, there's this, there's this uh, couple that we keep seeing. So as, as me and my girlfriend are, are going out to eat, we keep running into the same couple. And uh, I live in a small town, so, you know, people talk, right? And so we were over at the diner one of the times, and, and uh, my girlfriend, you know, feels like she recognizes this guy, but we can't figure out from where. And so we asked the owner of the diner, um, his name's Steve as well, we asked the owner of the diner, um, hey, uh, who is this guy? You know, do you know, do you know who he is? And, uh, uh, Steve says, Oh yeah, he, 
just recently moved up here. You know, he, he owns a couple of businesses. And if you saw that cabin down there, that cabin that was selling for like $1.2 million um, that says uh, bought, paid for in cash, he's the one that paid for that one in cash. And I was like, oh, okay. So I knew who he was, right? But then we just, we kept crossing paths and we, we would always lock eyes, but we wouldn't necessarily, you know, have a conversation because we didn't actually know each other. So here's what I did. Last Sunday when we were out to brunch and we saw him again, I just approached him and said, it seems like we're, we're crossing paths a lot. My name's Christian. I live right down by the rodeo grounds. Um, and he said, oh, hey, you know, uh, uh, yeah, my name's Kenny and I live over off of the, the highway there in, in one of the cabins. And, and we started connecting and he started asking me, what do I do? And I said, real estate. I, and I said, what do you do? And and he said, oh, you know, I, I do a little bit with real estate, but most of what I do is in business. So I kind of, you know, take businesses that are failing and I, you know, pump some capital into them and, and uh, restructure them. And then, you know, that's how I make my money. And I said, that's great. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I just said, hey, I, I'd like to have more friends out here. You know, I'm out in the country and most of, my, most of the people I know are out in the city. And uh, why don't we do a double date sometime? And he said, yeah, I'd love that. That would be awesome. And so we started to build a connection. Now I know that I'm not going to go to Kenny, right? This guy is a multi, multi-millionaire. I'm not going to go to him and necessarily enroll him in Renatus next week. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start building that relationship, building the long game, right? And I don't care if he never enrolls in Renatus. I'm going to bring value to that relationship. And I know that there's things to where that value is going to be reciprocated, whether it's the people he introduces me to or the money he wants to put into real estate or whatever it is, I'm going to build that long game. But I always have it in my mind that Renatus is for everybody. So I know that even though Kenny is very successful and a multi multi-millionaire and a venture capitalist and somebody that buys up businesses, if I get him around this Renatus group, and he gets to feel the love and the connection and the, you know, the value that we bring. There's a high likelihood he's going to be a part of what we do in some form or fashion. He's going to end up buying his combo. And uh, you know what? It's going to be one of those things that he considered the best thing he ever did. Because just about everybody that I've ever enrolled in Renatus has in one form or another, felt like this is the best thing that they've ever did. So play the long game, folks. That's, uh, that's the message for today. Now, please understand that does not mean to stop doing those things which meaning um, they're easy to do and they're easy not to do. You got to make the phone calls. You got to make the invites. You got to follow up with keep people. You got to ask for the order. You got to book a meeting from a meeting, right? But on top of that, continuous follow up, build value, and love the people, not the money. You see, when we're talking about Valentine's Day, right? You're going to love the people. You're going to use the money. Don't do it the other way around because they'll feel it. People can feel when you're solely focused on how they can benefit you financially. Care about how this can make a difference from the, for them. Care about the value that it can bring from them. Okay? So love the people. Use the money. That's my message for you. Happy Valentine's Day. Looks like we have a chat in here. Uh, Sandra? No problem. Appreciate you guys being on here. Hope you guys all have something amazing planned for today. And you, if you don't have a significant other, no big deal, right? Love yourself. Have the opportunity to care enough about yourself to give yourself that, that uh, you know, self-care. Look at yourself in the eyes and remind yourself how great you are. Thanks for joining us, folks.